Before we talk about Eric Sloan's work on Canvas, we probably should stop for a minute and take a look at some of his earlier works on what's known as Canvas Board. This particular painting, Clipper Ship at 7,500 feet, was painted on Canvas Board. And we know this because it has the feel almost of masonite, but if you look very carefully in the paint, you can actually see the fabric of canvas underneath. The other way that we know that this canvas board is, and this is super secret, if you pick it up and flip it over, you'll see there's a tag here that reads Fulton Canvas Boards. So this one is uh, particularly big. I didn't measure it, but I'm going to guess that it is about 18 by 24. And canvas board came and still comes in sort of regular nominal sizes, like 16 by 20, uh, 18 by 24, probably 20 by 26. But they don't usually come much bigger than that. And these were prepared for the artist and I'm having some trouble here because this house was built in 1780, so the walls tend not to be very straight or level, and so everything you hang in the gallery tends to be a little bit crooked. But um, these were prepared for the artist, so the artist didn't have to gesso them, meaning to put sort of a primer coat down on them. And they, more importantly, didn't have to take the time to stretch the canvas uh, over a frame and then begin their painting. These came the shape and size that they were. Now, interestingly enough, you find Eric's paintings on canvas board mostly from about 1920 until about maybe 1945. Um, and it's kind of curious to me because he tells a story in both I Remember America and also in 80 of how he, when he first traveled across the country to Taos, New Mexico in the early 1920s. He was in Colorado and he says that he ran into a disgruntled lumber salesman who had a product called Masonite. And apparently this man was not doing so well in selling this particular product. And so he gave some of the samples to Eric and said, well, maybe you can use these to paint on. And Eric claimed that he took them to Taos eventually and a lot of the Taos painters picked up on painting on masonite. And today, uh, quite a few artists use masonite. Back in the 20s and the 30s, it wasn't very well known. But anyway, what's strange about that story to me is that Eric, to my knowledge, did not use masonite uh, at first. What he used was canvas board. So most of his earlier works that are in oils are on canvas board. Now, we shouldn't forget that he did a lot of illustration during the same time period. He also did a lot of pen and inks. He also used uh, colored pens and pencils and even pastels. Um, so there were other uh, works of art and mediums that he's working with. But when it came to oil paints, canvas board tends to be uh, the standards for some of his earlier works. This particular one is of a four engine clipper ship, probably came out of, um, I would guess, Port Townsend or Port Washington. Um, these were the um, seaplane bases on the East Coast anyway. And Eric would have been familiar with these locales and he also would have been familiar with the pilots that flew in and out. Uh, but just by way of example, before we talk about canvas, it's important to know that Eric did also paint on canvas board. However, um, as I said before, generally by the Second World War, maybe shortly after, uh, Eric switched to canvas and then eventually to masonite. Um, and this is pretty interesting because this one is dated 1942. Um, so uh, sometimes when you read that Eric had an aversion to putting dates on things, it's funny to see a number of paintings uh, throughout his lifetime that he did add a date to. But there is the uh, only example I currently have in the gallery of an Eric Sloan painting that's on canvas board. But believe it or not, such a thing does exist. Let's take a look now at one of his works on canvas. The first painting I'd like to show you by Eric on canvas is this painting entitled West Wind. You'll notice right away that it has quite a great feel to it. You can see that Eric has done uh, within his cloud work 
uh, enough to really illustrate the, the fact that there is a strong wind blowing uh, and propelling this sailboat forward. You see the sailboat heeled over quite a bit. Uh, there's a, a, a figure that is leaning out um, to try to balance that pressure and that force from tipping over the sailboat. Uh, you have some foreboding dark clouds on this side of the image. And probably my favorite part of the whole piece is this red uh, pennant, which is straight out indicating just how strong that wind is blowing. Now, one of the questions is, well, how do you know this is canvas and not either canvas board uh, or masonite? Um, canvas board is almost eliminated immediately because of the size of this painting. Canvas board didn't come in dimensions as large as this. Um, one clue or one indication uh, that you can rely on more or less without having to touch or take the painting off the wall is if there is a presence of what is called crackalore. I'm not sure that this camera will pick up uh, these hairline, they almost look like hairline cracks in the painting. And that really shouldn't cause uh, a prospective buyer any alarm. Uh, those hairline cracks can happen when a painting is done on any surface because really they are begun by the difference in the paint that is the first layer or two and the paint that is applied as the final layer. And the difference is, is that if the final layer is applied before the lower or first or primary layers have had a chance to cure, those layers will cure at different rates and that's where you get crackalore. So the question is, well, if it happens on every surface, how come I'm more um, convinced that a Sloan painting that has crackalore is done on canvas? The reason is, is that it can be a good indicator because canvas moves. Um, masonite moves too, believe it or not. Masonite is a wood byproduct. It will shrink and expand over time, but canvas moves uh, during the day. And if you had a camera that could uh, take slow motion stills over the course of 24 hours, you would actually see this canvas moving in and out, um, stretching and contracting minutely. Uh, and that's due to temperature and it's also due to barometric pr pressure, changes in those two things. Um, and so when you see crackalore fairly prevalent in an Eric Sloan painting before you have the chance to touch it or really examine it closely, it can be one clue that the painting is on canvas. Um, the way that most um, people uh, figure out something is canvas is unfortunately by touching it. And I don't recommend that practice, but I'm about to violate my own recommendations by trying to show you that when you touch canvas and put pressure on it, you will see that canvas move in and out with my force and my pressure just, my, just by using my hand. Um, and that's because of course canvas, canvas is a fabric. It doesn't have a backing like canvas board does. And of course the other way to tell whether it's canvas is to simply pick it up and look at the other side which I will do in a few minutes and let you take a look at what it would look like um, from the back. Canvas board, canvas, and masonite from the back all have different looks and I'll show you each look. I did show you the back of the canvas board painting of the clipper ship at 7,500 feet. That almost looks like smooth uh, cardboard, uh, but it does have some density to it. It's not quite as dense as wood, uh, but it is more dense than cardboard. It usually is smooth, often has a label that indicates that it is artist board um, or canvas board or something equivalent. Uh, canvas looks just like the fabric canvas on the backside because canvas on the backside isn't primed like a uh, panel or masonite usually is. Uh, and you'll see that, like I said, in a minute or two, I'll show it to you. And Masonite, uh, in a later video, I'll also show you the back of paintings that are uh, by Masonite. And that most often looks like a sheet of hardware store Masonite from, from the back. Sometimes it's primed, which can fool you into thinking it might be canvas board, but it does have a different uh, feel and sound to it. It's more, it's much more substantial than canvas board is. Um, 
I have a theory about Canvas and Eric Sloan with Canvas in particular. And the theory, uh, like all good theories, is based somewhat on fact. And the facts that I do know is that um, I was very good friends with Eric Sloan's fifth wife, uh, Ruth. And Ruth and Eric were married in 1957. And prior to their wedding, her father went on a business trip to Europe. And one of the countries he visited was Belgium. And he bought Eric a large bolt of canvas uh, in Belgium. Actually, Ruth referred to it as Belgian linen and brought it back with him to the States and gave it to Eric um, as a present. And Eric in return took some of that canvas and he made a beautiful painting of Long Island Sound and gave it to uh, Ruth's parents. Um, and I will actually show you that very painting in, in um, well, in a few minutes. And uh, Ruth told me that there was an awful lot of canvas on that bolt, much more canvas than would yield one painting, even a large painting. Uh, and I believe that since most of the paintings on canvas I see by Eric Sloan are all from around the same period, the mid-1950s, uh, and the fact that Eric Sloan ended up loathing canvas, I believe that all of the canvas paintings done by Eric Sloan came from that single bolt. The reason why Eric loathed canvas was for the same reason that I told you about when I pressed on the painting. Canvas has an awful lot of give to it. And that was significant to Eric as a problem because of the way Eric was painting. Uh, especially in the cloud work, uh, Eric would take a paintbrush with paint on it, and his technique was to both smash and rub. And that technique worked really well on a surface that was very stable and had no give to it. It didn't work so well on canvas. And um, it was very hard for him to get those cloud effects on canvas as opposed to trying to get cloud effects on canvas board and also eventually on masonite. So he, he really didn't like working with it. The other problem for Eric was that unlike canvas board, canvas you pre-stretched, the artist stretched to a certain size and then painted on it. That was different than masonite because masonite, Eric figured out very early in his career, he could crop. So just like a photographer would take a picture or a negative and crop that image to make a better image, Eric cropped many, many, many of his paintings on masonite. I've had several clients tell me stories of looking at an Eric Sloan painting and trying to decide you know, which one of them they would like to buy. And Eric would be next to them and not saying very much. And all of a sudden he would say to them, oh, I can make that one there better. And he would disappear for a few minutes, and the cl my clients thought, well, you know, he's gonna he's gonna fix something or add something or or do something to the painting uh, for us right now. And indeed, he did. He came back with a square and ebony pencil and a circular saw, and he would scribe the line uh, right on the masonite, right over the paint, and he would cut cut it in front of him with a circular saw. And universally, all everyone who's told me this story said, once he did that, the painting was better they could see that that painting was so much better than what they had seen initially. And Eric was very good. He had a very good eye to know that at certain times and at certain points, things need to be cut out of the paintings that he had finished. And he was not shy about doing that. Canvas doesn't lend itself to that. The artist stretches the canvas over a frame and that dimension is what they have to work with. And they have to work within the confines of that dimension. And for Eric, that was the beauty of Masonite. Masonite gave him the freedom to paint whatever he wanted to paint and know that when it was finished, he could cut it to do anything he wanted with that image. So this and the one that I'm going to show you were probably done not only at the same time period, but were probably done from the same bolt of canvas. I promised I'd show you the back of a west wind, and you can see the color of the canvas. You can also see how it is stretched 
on the wooden frame uh, that's sort of inside of the silver frame. Uh, and you can certainly tell from the verso that by the texture that this is indeed a painting done on canvas. As promised, this is my favorite Eric Sloan painting on canvas. This one is titled Into the Sky, and it's a fairly large piece. It's 55 and 3 quarters inches wide and 33 and 3 quarter inches tall. It is painted on canvas, and I noticed when I was editing this video that the fact that canvas was so flexible and you could see it when you push on it didn't really come through very clearly in the segment I did on the sailboat painting. So just after this segment, I will put another short segment up where you can see the flexibility of canvas, and I will shoot it from the side to give you a better sense of what that looks like. This is the painting that Eric Sloan did for his future wife's parents. And this was fifth wife, Ruth Henricks. And if you recall, her father had traveled to Europe and bought a bolt of canvas or linen in Belgium and brought it back for Eric to paint on. And this one is one of my favorites because the not only the color, but the movement that uh, you can see as you look at the painting is, is quite extraordinary. You'll see that besides the cloud form, which is very dramatic and striking, you can see a flight of geese both in the foreground and also a number of geese landing in the water uh, in the background. So all in all, it's a beautiful work by Eric and it is on canvas.